Shalom. Today is March 18th, and it is day 164 of the war between Israel and Hamas. Let's take a look to Yadiot Achronot, the other newspapers that Israelis are reading today in uh, Israel. It reads, Hametichut bei Netanyahu le Biden. The tension between Netanyahu and Biden is rolling downhill into a crisis. And in the red, it reads, Hitnagshut, collision. We see here Biden, we see here Netanyahu. Um, and this is uh, regarding the well, the, the statement that Netanyahu said yesterday, he spoke to uh, the U.S. and he said, how quickly did you forget October 7th? Well, the families of the, of the hostages in Israel are furious. It's, they, they're saying, it seems like the country is saying, we do not care of the support of the U.S. How can they do that? It is a huge mistake. I personally don't believe that Israel doesn't care um, about the support from U.S., but that is what the hostage families are feeling as they need the U.S. on our side uh, for this deal that's coming up, the hostage exchange deal. Hamatara, the purpose, letzamtsem parim, to narrow the gaps. And this is about the hostage exchange deal that is happening in Qatar. Um, the Israeli delegation is there with uh, Hamas, and Qatar will be negotiation between the two sides. And here, is the, here are the heads of the, of the delegation. Ronen Bar, Dedi Barnea, and Nitzan Alon. They're the top officials, um, uh, also in the security forces in Israel, and also uh, in this negotiation. And I'm reading, HaPe'arim HaMashmotim, the significant gaps. They're saying one of the major issues that Israel and uh, Hamas do not agree upon is not the number of um, terrorists that will be released for the hostages, but rather the quality of these terrorists. It's, we're speaking about 150 very heavy prisoners, and some of them are murderers that are sentenced for life. Another issue that's disputed between Hamas and Israel is uh, allowing, allowing Palestinian refugees moving from the south back to their homes in the north. Israel does not want to allow this because they're saying it will cause Hamas to control the north of Gaza again, while Hamas is demanding that all if, uh, refugees return to their homes. Israel, Israel wants to allow only women and young children um, returning to their homes gradually. Let's keep this deal in prayer. These leaders have a lot on their shoulders, and uh, this will determine who will be released, what hostages will be released. Um, hope Israel wants the alive ones first, but also will determine who, uh, which terrorist will be released, which Muslim terrorist will be released from the Israeli prisons. The next article is about the crisis between America and the U.S. Here in the cartoon, we see Benjamin Netanyahu on the right and Biden on the left, and um, they're both officially speaking, while Trump is enjoying popcorn and coke watching the, the play. And it reads, Brit al-Saf Tehom, alliance on the verge of uh, a Tehom, a, a downfall or a crisis. And it reads, since the total support Israel has gotten from America, from the U.S., since October 7th, we knew some disputes and sanctions and some worrying stuff. But yesterday, this has, got, this has reached a peak. It says, when the Prime Minister Netanyahu turns to our ally in the international community and attacks, saying, Kol kach maher have, you, uh, have you forgotten the massacre so quickly? Did you lose your uh, moral compass? In addition to that, in the last few days, there are some rumors that uh, gov the government with Biden is thinking to delay the supply of arms to Israel. And these arms have been... Um, helping Israel to keep its upper arm in these military operations. The next story is about the Giburim Shalo Yeshuvah, the heroes that will not return. And this is Daniel Peretz, 22 years old, from Yad Bin Yamin. And he was known to be kidnapped on October 7th. Yesterday, the IDF told the family they were, uh, it was officially announced that his body was taken on October 7th. So first he was murdered and then taken, and he's not amongst the living. It reads, He did everything to save other people's lives. Here in the left, it reads, uh, The longest tunnel in Gaza was exploded yesterday in the northern part of the Gaza Strip. And this is a long tunnel that connected between the north part of the Gaza Strip to the southern part. This tunnel was two kilometers and a half long, and it connected, it connected between different battalions throughout all the Gaza Strip. Here there are some human interest stories. We hear about Yaakov, he's 99 years old. His wife died, he says, uh, at age 93, just two years ago. He visits her grave every day and he tells her about what's going on. 
He is a Holocaust survivor. He came here on his own when his family, uh, they were all killed in the Holocaust. After he visits his wife's grave, he visits two soldiers that fell, Russo and Chai. And he says, I I water the plants, and I uh, organize the pictures and the rocks. So he's a Holocaust survivor, right? And he says, I tell their family members that there's a reason to get up in the morning. There's a reason for life. You can be proud of your heroes, of your sons who were heroes. Here on the left, we see a photograph of a war diary of Dennis. Yoman HaMilchama, war diary, Shel Dennis. Here's Denis Yakimov. He wrote to his wife, he wrote to his baby daughter. He has lots of uh, notes that he wrote about the operations, about his friends. Um, they quote him here. It's very, very uh, just interesting and personal to read. I'm turning to the economy section, and uh, there's a big, large article about firecrackers in Purim. Purim is an Israeli holiday that's coming right up in the next few days. And the firecrackers that usually children mostly use in Purim uh, they get dressed up and they use these um, toy guns with firecrackers. It is very alarming to the PTSD soldiers, the post-traumatic soldiers. And it reads here, Purim Betzel Milchama, Purim and the shadow, shadow of war. And the, it reads here that the stores are letting go of selling firecrackers. So that's, uh, that's a big thing. The firecrackers are really alarming to the post-traumatic soldiers as it reminds them or may take them back to what they experienced in the war, especially, especially this year. It reads, are you looking to buy uh, fruits and vegetables from the area surrounding Gaza, in Hebrew called Otef Aza? Well, here's a new symbol that will help you choose the, best, the vegetables. Um, the Otef Aza, the Israeli area that's surrounding Aza, plus more of the western Negev, the Negev is the southern desert close to Aza, it takes about the third, it's about the third of the agriculture land in Israel, and it has a lot of fruits and vegetables and wheat and milk. So many Israelis want to support that area right now because October 7th, because it was so um, hard hit there. And Israel came up with a little logo here, a symbol. It says, Gadel Beotef Ubanegev Hamaravi. This has been grown in the Otef, which is the surrounding of Gaza, and the western part of the Negev. So it's a way to uh, strengthen the economy in Israel when you buy Israeli grown produce and not from Turkey, for example, that lots of Turkey vegetables come find their way into Israel. So this is it for today. For more updates and stories, visit us, visit us at allisrael.com. You can um, follow us on our social network and share this video with your friends. Like it if you liked it. This is Rotem again for All Israel News.